In this video, I'm going to go over five modifications that I made for my new garage workshop. What's going on everybody? Welcome back. I'm Jason with Bents Woodworking. Welcome to part five of the new shop series, where today I will be discussing five different modifications, maybe you want to call it upgrades, that I made to the shop and I want to share exactly what those were and what those things cost. I think this information may be beneficial to some of you that are either looking to do some upgrades in your shop or are getting ready to move to another shop. If you've been following along with the series, there's two other upgrades or modifications that I made that I won't talk about in this video, and that is the air conditioning unit or the mini split, and then the installation of the American green lights. And if you haven't seen those videos, I'll go ahead and leave links to those videos up here and you can check them out after this. And I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right in with number one. The first modification that I made was going to be insulation. I got very lucky because the shop that I currently have is insulated very well. I didn't have to add any insulation other than what I'm about to talk about. The attic is directly above my shop. There's nothing up there but insulation. And then when I moved in, all of the walls had already had insulation put in them, so it's something that I didn't have to add. So the only thing that I needed to worry about in terms of insulation was the garage door itself. And to do that, I was actually looking at a few different options. The first option I looked at was actually getting insulated garage doors installed. Obviously, this is probably the most expensive option out of the different things that I looked at. So one, it really wasn't in the budget for what I wanted to do with the other upgrades and modifications that I'm gonna talk about in this video. The other downside to that, and this is something for you guys to think about, in the event you wanna get insulated garage doors, if you live in a community with an HOA, more than likely you're gonna to have to get approval from the HOA in order to replace those doors because they probably look different than the doors you currently have. And there's actually another reason, which is the second thing I'm gonna talk about, which is the wall that I built to enclose. So the reason I decided to go the route that you see behind me, which is an insulation kit for a garage door, is because one of my garage doors I didn't need to have replaced simply because it would never be used and that was just an additional expense. So let's talk about what I put on my garage door. The insulation kit that I use for the garage door is the Owens Corning uh, Garage Door Insulation Kit. And the cost of each one of these kits is right around $80. I have a three car garage, so I have a double door and a single door. So because of that, I needed three kits. Each kit covers basically a single garage door. I decided to go with these because I've actually used these in another garage in Georgia before and the performance was really, really good. The kits themselves are extremely, extremely easy to install. There's really nothing to it. Uh, the instructions are very clear. I would say from start to finish, it took me about an hour and a half to two hours to do the double door, so maybe a little bit less for the single door. So far, the performance is fantastic. Like I said, I've used these before, and I was really impressed with them, but now with the installation of the mini split, I can not run I can get this to like 70 degrees in my shop. I can turn off the AC or the heat or whatever it is, go inside, and I might have a two degree difference when I come out the next morning, and that's with the temperature dropping well below what the temperature in the shop is. So while it's very important and it's nice to have a mini split in the shop, good insulation is way more important in my opinion, because if you don't have good insulation, then the mini split or an air unit or whatever you have to try to keep your shop temperature controlled is just gonna be running constantly and it's just gonna burn up at some point because it's always trying to maintain that uh, and it'll never stop. So um, very happy with this Owens Corning kit uh, and relatively inexpensive and a very simple modification to do to your shop. So number two is actually walling in my garage door. Now this is not something that I came up with. Mark Spagnolo or the Wood Whisperer has done this in his shop and that's where I got the idea from and it just seemed like a really good solution. It gave me a whole nother wall to store stuff which worked out great because this is the end of my shop where my assembly table is and I wanted all of my tools, clamps, all of that stuff, measuring devices, marking devices, planes, everything that I use at the assembly table, I now have a place to store that on the wall to where they're easily accessible. The build itself is really, really easy. I just built a frame to go on the outside of the rails for the door, attached it to the wall with some L brackets, and then used some black melamine on the faces. So really, really inexpensive in terms of cost, and it gave me an entire other wall. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, yeah, but now you don't have the ability to 
get a car in the garage. So my three car garage is 19 and a half by 29 and a half, which is on the small side of a three car garage. That door serves absolutely no purpose in terms of trying to pull a car in and out. So I have zero need to ever open that garage door for any reason. The edge of the garage door is a couple of inches away from the wall. So even if I had a passenger in the car, there's no way they would ever be able to open the door and get out of it. So for me, it just made sense, gave me a whole nother wall, which was a huge difference in storage ability in this garage. The cost for this project was only about $150, and that's including buying the three pieces of black melamine. Other than that, I just needed some two by four by tens, some two by four by eights, and then a couple of two by eights for the exterior portion to get it away from the rails themselves. So this is a modification that I made that I am extremely, extremely pleased with. The third thing that I'm gonna talk about is the garage door opening operation itself. So when I moved into this house, it had the traditional you know, garage door opening system, the motor that jets into the shop about halfway, and it had really low hanging rails. My ceilings are about nine and a half feet tall, and the rails were only like seven and a half feet above the ground. So when I saw this, my initial thought was, well, I just need to get rid of all this stuff, so the only option's a roll-up door. So I called a local garage door company, or a couple local garage door companies, and had them come out and give me an estimate. And what they told me was, well, we can just put a side mount motor and get rid of the current motor, and then we can raise your rails even higher. And so as you can kind of see in the backdrop behind me, this right here is now the side mount motor for the garage door. The spring itself is much higher, and the rails are much higher. And then on this side, you can see I actually removed everything. So I actually took all of the hardware for the single car garage and had all of that removed minus the vertical rails, which are now encased behind the wall. And I kept all of those parts and put them in the attic in the event that I move or sell this house someday and need to have the stuff reinstalled for the new buyers. Hopefully that's not gonna happen anytime soon. So when they came out and gave me that information, I was extremely pleased because I had no idea that that even was a thing. I didn't even know that that option existed. And it turns out it was a much more cost-effective route than doing the roll-up garage doors. It's pretty remarkable the difference that it made, especially just raising these rails up. It, it was just, it was like I had all of this open extra space in this shop. It just made the shop feel so much larger. And even more importantly, when I removed everything for that other side. Another huge benefit that I couldn't even believe was how quiet the garage door is. I didn't even know garage doors were capable of being that quiet. And just to give you an idea of the sound, I'll go ahead and real quickly open the garage door just so you can hear how much noise it's actually producing. As you can tell, it's extremely quiet in the event that, let's say that you do have uh, rooms or something above your garage, just overall, like the noise it emits, you don't even know. And it's actually awesome because my dogs used to bark all the time every time the garage door opened. Now they don't even notice that the garage door opens and closes. So to have my previous garage door hardware removed, all of the new hardware, the extension in the rails, the new rails, the motor, removing all of this stuff for this door as well, Everything done, installed, and the old stuff carried away was around $1,850. This was a project that I was a little bit concerned and hesitant about initially because, you know, $1,850, I thought I could spend towards something else in the shop and I just didn't know if I was gonna be able to budget it. And I was like, this can wait. Uh, I can remove all the garage door stuff myself. But now that I did it, I'm so glad that I did it because it just made the garage feel way more open and really made it feel like there's a lot more space and I don't have to worry about these rails and the garage door is so quiet now and everything is out of the way and it was worth every penny. It's one of the, the best decisions I made in terms of an upgrade uh, for the shop. Okay, so number four is the one that I've gotten probably the most questions about overall, like what I was gonna do for the electrical. Initially, I planned that it was gonna be around $5,000 because I thought I was gonna have to have a whole nother um, you know, thing of power run to my house, a whole nother service and come to find out that was not the case. And it was actually much cheaper than what I thought it was gonna be. So this was the existing panel from the home. I already have 200 amp service coming to the house. And this is a 3040 panel, meaning it has space for 30 circuits, uh, or 30 breakers rather, but it can run 40 circuits. And that's done through tandem breakers. 
The issue that I had and that I thought was gonna be an issue is that literally every single one of these was being used for the house already. I had multiple electricians come out and they gave me a couple of different options. They basically said, what we can do is we can take your existing panel, pull that out and put in a 4080. So we'll have 40 uh, sp space for 40 breakers, but it'll give you the ability to run 80 circuits. The downside to that is that that would have required us to get a permit and have people come out and deal with messing with the power and it would have just been a longer process. The other suggestion that they had was we could just put a couple of these on tandem circuits, open up two slots and we can put in a 100 amp breaker and then we'll run a line from that 100 amp breaker to a separate panel. The downside to this is that I now have two panels in my shop, but I didn't really look at that as a downside because this area is where my dust collector is, and so it's, it, it's kind of unusable space in the first place. So the only thing that needed to be done was they took these two breakers, moved them up and put them on tandem circuits, and then added this 100 amp breaker. So this 100 amp breaker powers this box. Now inside of this box is everything for the shop. This is every single circuit that I added for the shop and it's just another 30, uh, 30 bay panel. And so the nice thing is, is I added all of my different electrical outlets to the shop and I still have all of this room to grow if I really needed to, which I don't think I'm going to. In my shop, I already had four outlets. I had one on the far wall, one on the wall that connects to the house, and then obviously the two in the ceilings, which controlled the two different garage door opener motors. Each one of those were just dual outlets, which I was actually surprised because there was four outlets in this garage, and most other garages I've been to have like one outlet, and it's always been a pain in the butt. And I know that that's probably a concern that a lot of you guys have is that you're in your garage and there's only one outlet. So in total, I ended up adding five quad 120 outlets and four dual 240 outlets. Every single one of the outlets that I ran is all on a 20 amp breaker. Real quick, just to give you a better idea, I covered this in my video on the actual SketchUp model for my shop, but this is just to give you an idea of where I added these outlets in the shop instead of panning around the room and being all shaky with the camera. And then in addition to the different outlets that you do see here, which are all either the yellow or the red uh, outlet marks, I did add two more over here on this wall. And those were decided based on a couple of things that had changed and while they were actually here installing the electrical itself. There is one other thing that I did add and I did have them run a 220 line outside where I knew I was gonna be placing the mini split. And so when they ran that 220 outside, it just left the exposed wires to hook up a quick disconnect box. And then that way the air conditioning and the quick disconnect is on its own 220 breaker and it's not, there's no plugs or anything for the air conditioning unit or the mini split that's inside of the shop. Now one question that seems to come up a lot or people are always concerned about is, well yeah, what if I'm running my tools in the shop, I'm on the same power as the home. I thought that that was gonna be an issue as well, but basically I would have to be running my dust collector, my CNC, my table saw, my joiner planer, a bunch of other stuff in the shop, and then my wife would have to be, uh, you know, cooking with all of the stove, uh, the oven, uh, have all the lights on in the house in order for it to ever get to a load that would, you know, trigger the main breaker for the home. So far I haven't had any issues at all, and I don't suspect to have any issues because at absolute most, at any given time, um, you know, I'm not a production shop. I'm not running six tools and five people are working at, at any given time, right? So I might be drawing maybe 30, 40 amps at the absolute most, and that's with my mini split running and everything else. So, and I would think that's even a too high of a number. The total cost I've invested in the electrical came out to be $2,200, which was a little bit more than it was originally, but then I added a couple of different outlets and added the wiring of the quick disconnect and putting all that stuff in place. But again, it was less than what I thought it was going to be. So um, I knew that this was something I obviously absolutely had to do. So to me, it was a no brainer. So hopefully that gives you guys a better idea on the electrical portion. Um, and what it would cost. One thing that probably did benefit me though, however, was the fact that I didn't have any drywall at the time. It was just, you know, 
open and it was easy to work with. So that could be an issue and obviously could add an expense or you could just run a conduit in your shop to different outlets. One thing that I did wanna point out when it comes to the electrical uh, before I go to the fifth and final upgrade is this is an access panel. And so all this does is this just pops off and the insulation is behind that but the main wires are running down into the panel itself. So if I ever need to add anything, all I have to do is pop this panel off and we can get access uh, to the, uh, not only to the attic to run the lines down whatever wall I want them to go, but also have access to the top of the panel. So I'm never gonna have to cut any of the drywall. I just have this access panel here uh, to give me the ability to change or upgrade in the future. So I've saved the thing that I'm most happy about for the fifth and final uh, you know, garage modification that I made for the shop. And that is the epoxy floor coating. This is something that I had absolutely zero intention on doing. It was never part of the budget. Of all the different modifications and upgrades that I've made, I, I would say that this one is the one that I am the most happy with. Just like the garage door relocation, motor relocation, it was something that I, I just, I just didn't know if it would be worth the money or if I really wanted to do it. I thought there were other things that were important, but, but I saved this one for last because this is by far uh, the one thing I am so glad, so, so glad, I cannot stress it enough uh, that I did for this shop. There's so many benefits to it. Uh, it's extremely durable. Uh, you know, I've already been dropping stuff, rolling stuff on it. There's been zero damage to it whatsoever. It is a absolute dream uh, to sweep the floor in this shop because everything is just so much easier than my previous shop that had OSB subflooring. And it just seemed like I was just moving the dust uh, evenly over the wooden floor. This is just really quick cleanup. Um, it, it's just, I'm very glad that I did it. I hired a local company in the area because I couldn't do it myself. I needed it to actually be done before I got here so I could just move my tools into place. The cost for this project was $2,280. And that was for my three car garage, which again is about 19 and a half by 29 and a half. And just to reiterate, this is my favorite upgrade that I made and the one that I feel is 100% gonna be in any shop that I have moving forward. So those are five different modifications that I made to my shop along with the costs associated with each of them. I hope you found something in this video uh, that sparks your interest or maybe you know in the future uh, or the planning for your shop or even your current shop, these are all things uh, to help you get a better idea of what something like that would cost. Going into this new space, I did have a budget in mind, uh, and I've actually been able to come in under that budget and get everything done that I really, really wanted to get done. Didn't think I was gonna be able to do everything I wanted to do because I had this idea in my head that everything was gonna be well, well over what the cost actually was. That's gonna do it for this video. Be on the lookout for part six, which will be the next part in the series where I will be covering the new dust collection and the ductwork installation. As always, everybody, thank you so much for taking the time to watch. I hope you found the information helpful. If you have any questions at all or comments or concerns, please leave them down in the comment section below, or you can head over to Instagram and find me there, at Benz Woodworking. Feel free to send me a DM and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. So until next time, get out in the shop, try something new, and I will see you in part six. Thanks.